Hello, my beautiful creatives, and welcome back to my art channel. My name is Chrissy B, and I'm a creativity coach, hoping to inspire you to live a more creative life every day. Well, it is that time again for another art journal with me. It has been a while since I've used my good uh, art journal, and that is my Strathmore Mixed Media art journal. It, I just love it because the pages really, really, really can take a beating, and they just are so scrumdiddlyumptious. I want to do some watercolors today, and I'm going to start by using a Stabilo. And I'm going to hold it very, very end, uh, very, very close to the end of the pencil because I want my, my marks to be very, very loose. And what I'm thinking is I want to draw something, uh, a shape of some sort, like an abstract kind of a shape, just to kind of give this some movement. And then I want to bring in my watercolors and play with those and see, see what happens. So, uh, yeah, I don't really have a plan, but I'm going to just kind of see how this goes. Okay, so that's simple enough. And let me grab out my watercolors. I think I'm going to use my Schmincke watercolor set. And I am. Okay, I think I'm the only artist who hates getting my art supplies dirty. Is that crazy? Maybe, maybe a little. But it's me, so I'm going with it. And I'm going to be very uh, random in the colors that I select, meaning I don't really know what colors I'm going to select. I'm just select. I'm just going to select whatever kind of feels right. So keep my stabilo close at hand. I don't know if I'm going to need it again, but you never know. I'm also going to make sure that my watercolor brushes are close at hand. And I'm going to use a size 12. Um, and this is a Royal and Lang nickel. I use these quite often. Okay, so I'm going to keep the colors kind of loosey-goosey. And like I said, I don't really have a plan. Oops, I'm losing my pencil. Let me grab that. And I've got some water next to me. And let's see, what am I gonna do? I wanna just kinda start. And I'm gonna do a really vibrant orange to start. Because I think that would be awesome. And what I wanna do is I wanna color each one of these little sections a different color. And I don't mind if it touches the line and kind of like activates. I'm expecting it to. Just kind of get the color. I'm just spreading some water around first and I can intensify the color wherever I feel it needs to be intensified. The thing to make note as well is I don't usually watercolor without uh, gessoing my page first just because I like the watercolor sitting on top of the page a little bit more. So this is kind of an experiment for me because I don't really uh, work on a non-primed surface. So I just want to kind of see what will happen. So far I'm liking it. There are some like little lines here that I'll need to deal with. That's okay. Let me just keep adding water first. Kind of running along that line, trying to touch it, but not touch it too much. Cause I'd like the line to stay there. We can always bring it back if we need to. And it's gonna have a lot of orange cause I didn't connect. Like I didn't separate these two sections. Okay, let me get some more orange over into this section before it completely dries. The general rule is when you do something that kind of freaks you out, I just tell myself to keep going. Keep going, let's see what it does. Maybe it'll be fabulous. And if not, it was a great experiment. Just kind of grab the color and blend it out a little bit. And then kind of let it fade away over here, add more water. Okay, something I don't want to have happen is I don't want there to be this puddle. So I'm going to just drag some more of that color this direction. Now, I see I have to remember not to play with it too much because it kind of gets very muddly, if that's a, co if that's a word, muddly. M yeah, muddly, we'll go with muddly. That orange is so vivacious, wowza. Vivacious is a good thing. It's just on this, it doesn't seem to go quite. Well, just keep going. Take your own advice, just keep going. So take that to the edge and I'm just gonna keep doing the same area. I'm trying to figure out, like, I get all of my little pieces, my little segments colored in. I don't know if I want to go like monochromatic or if I want to do all cool or warms. I'm working with a warm at the moment. I don't know if I want to keep working with only warms or if I want to mix them up. 
I guess we'll just go with it and not think too much. That's very difficult for me to do. Don't think so much, just do it. Let's add some water, get some color down, add water, and then blend it out. It's kind of my thinking process at the moment. And I'll pick it up, scooch it over, and drop it down. And you drop it down just by lifting your brush. And I need to be mindful of that line because I keep forgetting it's there. So let's bring that down. Make sure I go all the way to the edge. I'm just, I'm just actually adding water at this point. See if I can bring some of that color down. Try to avoid the harsh lines. Kind of scrubbing them out a little bit. You sometimes just don't know what watercolor is gonna do. And that's one of the things I like about it. Touch some water, just a touch of the orange. I don't mind it fading out. I just don't want it to go to complete oblivion. I still want there to be some orange there. And we're gonna leave that alone and let that section dry. And for the next se section, I'm gonna wash my brush out. And I'm gonna try to choose a section that is not gonna touch the orange just in case uh, the two sections touch on accident. I don't want them to make a big mess. I think I'm gonna go with the blue. And I'm gonna do this section right here. Oops. Try not to set my arm down, my hand down any of the other sections. And remembering to move my paintbrush with my whole arm, not just my wrist. And because my paintbrush is so large for that little section, whew, I'm impressed that that worked. Let's add a little bit more of that blue, just to get a little bit more intensity here. And just blend it out. At least that's what I'm thinking of myself. If I remember correctly, watercolor, now I'm relatively new to watercolor this year, just so you're aware, but my understanding is that watercolor, and I think from my own experience too, is that watercolor has a tendency to dry lighter than what you see when you put it down wet. So I'm trying to keep that in mind as I'm putting my colors down. I'm kind of seeing a woman dancing. Can you see that? Let me point her out to you. She's got her head thrown back here. Like imagine her hair kind of flowing back in the breeze. Here's her chest, her bust, her back, the swerve of her back. Here's a behind. She's got a little bit of a tummy maybe. Maybe this is her hips. Here's her dress flowing backwards. I love it. This is a happy woman. She's very happy. So I'm gonna choose another section. And I wanna choose a section that hopefully is not too wet. So I'm kind of like looking. I might do this one next. And I think for that one, we will choose, I don't know. Hmm. <laughs> Maybe a green. Maybe this olive green. I don't really have a plan, but I do want to do what kind of feels right. I don't want to forget to touch that black line. Because I want to bring, I like the color to run a little bit. That black runs. Blend this in. And then just like the blue, I'll probably bring in a little bit more intensity to the screen by adding some more color. I'm just dropping that and letting that run together. I don't know why she's a green face, but apparently she does. It's the beauty of abstract. You don't have to do it. You don't have to make it real at all. Just do whatever's in your head. It's kind of like looking at the clouds when you're a little kid and trying to find all the shapes in there. Let's see, take some of the water off my brush. I wanna pick up some of that green right there. It's kind of pooling a bit. And let that kind of run back out again. And then let that, I'll leave that alone. Down here, I kinda wanna do like a really good mustardy yellow. I'm not sure, I just do. So I'm just going to start that process here. Not forgetting to go up to that line and bring it down. It's a little brighter yellow than I expected. I might have to add something to it. That's okay. That's the beauty of art journaling. You just kind of make it up as you go. You just kind of let the process inspire you. I was hoping this would be a little bit more mustardy, kind of 
like Tuscan yellow or something. Let's add some more watercolor to it and see if I can get it to do that. You know what I'm talking about? Like the rich sunset gold color. That's better. Yeah, I like that. That one may take a little while to dry because I am putting quite a bit down. I like how the color kind of varies depending on how much you put down in different areas. Like this is very, very orange and it kind of fades out and then it goes back to really dark orange again in different places. The green as well. Let's move on to another section. I think we'll do this little section right here. Actually, let's do a little bum section. And for her little bum, I don't know, maybe a really deep red, kind of a red color. I don't know, we'll see, we'll see what it does. Thank goodness those colors are dried because I've touched the blue a couple times. And let's do the same thing where we add more intensity by picking up more color and kind of like letting it explode. I love that. Oh. Gorgeous. Okay, now let's leave that alone because I love that color. That's pretty. So we have red, blue, green, yellow, orange. I could always do a purple. Give her a purple bust. The Shmika watercolor only has one color of purple, which I know I'm more than capable of uh, mixing my own colors. But I like to just pick up colors that are already pre-mixed. I'm trying to make sure I don't put any like harsh lines in my watercolor. Let me mix this a little bit more. See if I can pick up some more color here. I just noticed the red over here. We have a huge puddle happening there. I'm gonna see if I can just let it dry and see what happens with it. Okay, and then I'll do this little last section here. We could do a different shade of green. That's kind of my gut, let's do like a limey kind of a green. Okay, let's add some more depth to that. Oops, our little purple is kind of bleeding. That's okay. I always like to say, just let it happen. Let it happen, don't panic. I do want to kind of... No, we're just gonna ignore it. I was gonna try to squelch it, but I don't wanna, oops. Just add a bunch of water right there. I didn't want to do that either. It's okay. I just want to make sure that I was taking that all the way to the black line there. There's a big white space there. Okay, so I'm going to take a quick break. Um, I'm going to let this completely dry. I'm going to let it completely dry naturally. So no heat tool to do that. I want to just kind of let it pool and sit wherever it wants to. And then we'll be back and we'll do some more. Okay, I'm finally back. That took probably a little over an hour, I think, to dry. So going through my head right now are thoughts of, it'd be kind of cool to use Zentangle in some of these. I'm also thinking about grabbing a small brush, which I grabbed a six, uh, Royal and Magnickel, and doing some more color, because there are areas where you can see they're completely washed out, probably because I overworked the watercolor. And you have this weird little, I don't know, looks like a mouth now. Like it, maybe this is a monster about to eat something. So I think I'm just going to go in and add some more color and be a little more, um, I don't know. Now everything is nice and dry. So it'll be more of a dry on dry type technique. At least that's what I'm thinking to myself. And I want to start in this light green area first, just to kind of see what, what we can do. So I'm just kind of putting down some kind of a dry brush. I'm not using a terribly wet brush because I just want to add some of that color. Okay. 
back down. Kind of like that, I think. There's a little more where I'm hoping to go with that. I want to keep some of the light color in there, however, because I like the variation. And try not to work it too much. And now that I see it, I do kind of want to go over that again. I love rich, bright colors. That just makes me really happy. So next I'll go with the red, keeping in mind that I'm going to try to keep my areas separate so that they have a chance to dry. Uh, before I move on to that, however, I want to take another stab at this green area that kind of got some purple in it. And I loaded my brush up pretty heavy with paint color. So let me just kind of spread that down a little bit. And I'll just let it kind of happen. But I want to help it a little bit. Kind of make it a little gradiated. So we kind of camouflage that purple. I don't know if it'll stay hidden as it dries, but we'll kind of just watch it. So let me wash my brush out and I'm going to go back to that same red I was using before. And I want to just kind of get some more color in there. See what I mean? It's just so vibrant. And just kind of fill that back in again. And then blend it out. Let's do it again. Pick up some red. Come back to my line just to lay it down. Trying to be neat about it, but not really like over stressing about it. And then take that color and blend it out. This shape now reminds me of a ladybug's body. Just the red. The green kind of reminds me of a pupa. A pupa of a butterfly. Now this part right here was the part that took the longest to dry was this red. This area where it kind of pulled. So I'm gonna, I'm trying to pull the color out of that area so it doesn't take quite so long to dry. Cause I don't mind waiting, but too long is a lot. And I'm not a very patient artist. If you've watched my channel at all, you know that already, don't you? Okay. I think that's good. Okay, so now let's go up to the purple. Let me turn this a little bit. And just kind of pull that color around a little bit. I think this is probably a strange angle. My my uh, muscles don't like it as much as the other angles, so it's okay. It's gonna make it do it anyways. Let's see if I can get that to come around. There's a big white gap. I think for the most part I'll have to fix that in the orange, but I'll bring the purple a little bit closer to our black line. Okay, there we go. Now let's do this yellow down here and then we'll do the green and then the blue. That way I'm not accidentally touching any wet spots. I'm gonna go back to that same yellow that I had chosen before and really kind of prep the color so it'll come on my brush rather easily. So remember I told you I wanted more of a Tuscan yellow? There it is. 
It's the same exact paint color. Just seems to be, I don't know, earthing out a little bit more, which is what I want. <laughs> Let's go to this olive section now. Okay, now let's come back to this blue. My only concern about going with this blue is I don't want it to get too dark. orange one more time just to make it really rich like the other colors. I'm at a really good spot to stop and let that dry again. And I don't know. I'm, I don't know if I'm patient enough to let it dry a second. Oops, to let it dry a second time naturally. So I may hit this with a heat tool. So I'll be right back as soon as that's dry. Okay, so I did hit that with a heat tool, and it is mostly dry now. And what I want to do is I want to come back in and bring some of that stibulo back in. Um, just because I think the contrast will be really nice. And I don't want to be too like perfect about it and I want to try to keep my movement kind of uh, loose so it stays nice and curvy to match what I've already done here. I'm kind of using a heavy hand to kind of press down on my stabilo. I'm going to swoop this black line into the yellow a little more than it actually was originally. I'm going to bring this swoop up to this blue as well. Trying to do that in one fell swoop here. Just going back over my line without picking up my pencil. So I think that takes care of most of the little black areas that were kind of happening. I'll have to resharpen my pencil after I'm finished today. And I'm grabbing my white Stabilo pencil, pen, I always say pencil, pen, it's my pen. And what am I going to do? Part of me thinks I want to outline it on the inside, kind of sketchy outline, inline, outline, you know. Part of me just wants to scribble a little bit. Part of me wants to journal on it. Hmm. And there's also part of me that really wants to activate that Stabilo because it's driving me bananas. That's not... So I'm taking a four, a number four pen, uh, number four paintbrush, and I am going to do that. Just kind of quick. Don't be too careful with it. Thanks, Whoopi. Initially, it will show up as a really stark black, but then it will fade to kind of a charcoal. <laughs> is just not to overthink it. 
Especially if it's something you've never done before. Like, I've never done this before. Just kind of making it up as I go. My rationale for getting it wet is I think that once I get this to be a little wet and it dries, it will be permanent. And then I won't have to worry about running my hand through it as I'm doing my white marks, whatever the white marks end up being. The black will be permanent underneath it. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take uh, my brush and this area up here where it kind of went awry, I'm just going to grab it and kind of pull some of that deep color in to my shape. So it creates kind of a shadow maybe. At least that's the story I'm telling myself. Okay, see how that's kind of feathering up? I'm just going to let that keep doing that while I'm playing. And then I want to do that to each of my shapes, just a little bit. Okay, I'm gonna hit this with a heat tool and I'm gonna let this dry. Okay, so what I've decided to do is because this, this is an art journal, I want to journal on top of this. Now, I think this is really quite cool and something that I would probably frame and hang up because I just love it so much. Um, it's very simple, and I think that's what I like about it, but I love the colors and I love the shape of it. And I still see the dancing woman with her head thrown back and looking up at the sky and just kind of in a twirl or something. So I want to journal, and I'm going to journal around the outline of her. And I'm going to do it in a white pen because I think that will stand out really well. And I want to try to do nice loopy... Um, lettering. Uh, kind of scribbly but still loopy. So I'm just going to put some music on and I will start journaling. Okay, it's so simple, easy peasy. And it says, Dear sweet beautiful girl, dance like no one is watching, sing like no one is listening, run as if you are it, twirl as if you are a five again, Live your one beautiful life out loud and on purpose. No one can like you. So I love that. I think it's super simple, super easy. I don't know, I might do a little border. Kind of do some... Oh, is that a sign when your pen doesn't want you to do a border? Kind of around the outside of the page. Right, and going straight and then doing a couple of squiggles. I'm going straight again, and straight, and squiggle, straight-ish, and we'll do one more squiggle for good measure. Now let's date this bad boy, and I think we can call that good. I have no idea how long this video is going to be. I'm sure it's probably a long one. I apologize for that. Feel, please feel free to fast forward any points. I don't mind. I won't be offended. Today is Friday, May 18th. So let's get my little date stamp uh, to the correct date. And I'm going to put my little date down here at the bottom. I don't know. I love her. I think she's gorgeous. I don't know where she came from. Um, and I love the color. She's so colorful and vibrant. And I keep saying the word vivacious. It's just so decadent. I love it. Love, 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 love it. So there is our video for this week. I hope that you enjoyed it. Um, I hope that they gave you some ideas on something you might be able to do in your art journal. Really, just pull your supplies out and start playing. Don't really have any preconceived ideas. Just kind of see what happens as you, you know, as you play. And that's one of the cool things about art journaling is that there's no one who's going to tell you that your art journal is wrong. There's no way, there's no wrong way to do an art journal. It's yours and you can do however you choose. So if you have any questions, please make sure to let me know down in the comment section. I would be super happy to help you in any way that I can. And I just really appreciate you um, being a Patreon subscriber and supporting me in my art journey. It means a lot to me and I just really want to say thank you. So until next time, bye for now.